For me, my model of leadership is, is Jesus. Jesus, the servant leader. And so I look to Jesus as an example of leadership, as an example of, of someone who humbled himself and knelt to wash the feet of those he served. So that's my call as a leader to say, if I want to set an example for my sisters, I look at the example of Jesus and how he served. I also am, am very conscious of the mercy of God. And I'm super conscious that I am only here because of God's mercy and God's grace. And so the mercy of God helps me as a leader to be merciful to others because I know that I'm human. I know that I'm vulnerable. I know that I have my gifts and my weaknesses. And I hold that self-awareness in the leadership space in trying as much as I can when I encounter others to be able to realize that I need to show that same mercy and compassion of Jesus. So my faith, my relationship with Jesus is very much center in my, my leadership space because I look to Jesus and I try to imitate him, to, to imitate his example in the way that I lead. I think if you read anything about faith-based leadership, you will know that in times of conflict and challenges that one of the really important things for you to draw upon is a sense of mindfulness and self-care in those conflicts and part of that of course is that the place of prayer and reflection reflective practice journaling um, you know, having a spiritual advisor or someone, a mentor or someone who can help you to just work through the challenges. For me, my faith is a very strong moral compass in the decisions and the things that I do. I don't have to go very far to look in the Bible at the examples of Jesus guiding, challenging the apostles and others around decisions that are being made. And sometimes that's just all you all you need is just a little bit of time to kind of reflect so that's a really important thing you have to carve some space out for yourself one of the challenges of being in leading a team particularly if you're in a really busy team like I am is to carve out time so in my diary every day I have focus time and you should do that too you probably don't know that in before this life, um, I actually was a member of the Australian Parliament for 12 years. And that is a really adversarial environment. So the notion of how faith kind of helped me in those circumstances, I think was probably, it was probably the most important tool in my toolbox. So sometimes, I know this sounds crazy, Sometimes, uh, if there was a particularly nasty or horrible, I mean, you've watched Question Time, you know what it's like. If there, if there was something like that going on, I always had a little, I had a pair of um, rosary beads in my desk. And sometimes I'd actually say a decade with the rosary and ask people to just calm down. I don't know if it worked, but it worked for me, I think. So it is about that meditation and contemplation and giving yourself some space. Um, for more generally, I think, I think the key to all of this is listen more, say less, be a great listener. You will learn so much more if you're not thinking ahead and trying to answer the, answer the response that someone is giving you. So leadership really is about imbuing those values, being respectful of other people, being respectful of their perspective and their views. We are often caught in the trap where we think that people all think the same way as we do, or that people might come to a solution in the same way or an outcome in the same way. But what we really know as leaders is that people uh, participate differently, they have different learning styles, 
They have different decision-making processes. They have different values and ideals. And of course, they have a life where they have different pressures going on that we may know nothing about. So compassion, listening, intention, values, gratitude for the work that they're doing, acknowledging their contribution, and knowing that most people, you can get the best out of them if you are actually as responsive and a servant leader to them. My Catholic faith serve as a compass, directing me towards values such as compassion, humility and justice. These values underpin my leadership style, guiding me to approach decisions with a sense of moral responsibility and a commitment to the well-being of those I lead. When I face with challenges, the teachings of the Catholic faith have instilled in me a sense of resilience, encouraging me to view challenges not as obstacles, but as opportunities for growth. In moments of adversity, I draw the strength from the spiritual foundation provided by my faith, enabling me to face setbacks with courage and perseverance. When I find myself at crossroads or to make a tough decision, I pause and pray, seeking clarity on the path that makes a positive difference. It's this guidance that helps me make decision with a keen sense of what's right and a real focus on looking out for everyone I work with. Through the lens of my faith, I view success as not solely an individual accomplishment, but a shared and collaborative effort. It encourages a sense of humility, recognizing that any achievements are a result of collective contributions. As we all know, failures and challenges are inevitable aspects of leadership. My faith, again, provides solace during these times, encouraging reflection. It enables me to approach failures not with a sense of despair, but as opportunities for learning. Not all of us can be leaders of nations, but each of us has the opportunity to lead in our daily lives. Lead with kindness and compassion. As St. Mother Teresa beautifully expressed, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. It is in these small loving actions that we make a meaningful impact on the world around us. Embrace the leadership roles that come your way, no matter how modest, and infuse them with the transformative power of kindness and compassion. My Catholic faith is so pivotal in not only in my leadership style, but I would say my whole entire being. My favorite verse in the Bible is John 15, 13, which is, no greater love there is than for a man to lay down his life for his friends. And so when I think about my role as a leader, much of it is framed with this example of Jesus on the cross who truly did lay down his life for his friends. And that gives me a sense of grounding whenever there are difficulties or challenges amidst the work that we are called to do. When we allow ourselves this perspective of being of service to others, this self-denial, uh, what we understand is agape love, the sacrificial love, then it motivates us to, to hope for the more. It gives us the, the impetus to go just a little bit further with someone uh, who we might be finding difficult to love in the workspace or in our, in our communities. Uh, but it also gives us something that we can hold on to, knowing that any suffering that we might endure, it has meaning, it has purpose, because it leads towards something much greater than ourselves. So I would say my Catholic faith is really what grounds who I am and, and the work that we, we do as leaders in the church. 
My Catholic faith provides me with a moral compass and is a source of strength in my role as a leader and in the decisions I make. Personal daily prayer for me is really important, but also prayer during work, at the start of every team meeting or at the beginning of each week. For major projects, we might have a special prayer that keeps us focused on our greater goals. A good example of this is the Plenary Council Prayer or the Synod Prayer. My faith helps me keep track of the greater mission of my work. It's easy to get caught up in the daily grind of targets and reports, but my faith helps me remember that this is about God's work and serving the community, and that is the goal I need to remember at all times. Faith motivates me to keep going even when hope is lost and it keeps me from falling into despair. In times of failure, the teachings of redemption, forgiveness and understanding that every person is on their own personal journey of growth helps me to remain resilient. The sacrament of reconciliation helps me to learn from my mistakes, seek forgiveness and continually strive for improvement, fostering a culture of accountability and grace.